All right, Lagos. And of course, when you hear this tune, what comes to mind? Yes, it's all about you and how we can live a you know, sustainable lifestyle in terms of you know, keeping our environment clean and uh, practicing you know, proper waste disposal methods. Yes, this is where we get to educate you. And of course, we ring that bell, yes, each and every time. You know, urging you to, you know, keep your environment clean. We get to educate you on practical, practical ways that which you, you know, you can dispose your waste properly in order to, you know, just keep that environment sustainable. Yes, for us all to live in. Uh, it's that moment when we ignite conversations, get towards tunneling our intentions into becoming environmentally conscious by incorporating eco-friendly practices into our daily lives. Welcome to Clean and Edge Lagos. This is a compelling and informative radio program dedicated to raising environmental awareness and promoting sustainable sanitation practices. We also get to, you know, explore the importance of being environmentally conscious and practical ways as we reveal to you practical ways at which you can dispose your waste properly. It's only the beat to achieve a cleaner and more sustainable environment. Welcome to today's installment. My name is Mike James. Now we understand that the rains are here and this is the time at which we need to be, you know, proactive in terms of, you know, uh, taking care of our environment. We know the, you know, effects of a rainfall in our environment. And this is the time we need to put in more efforts in terms of, you know, preparing for uh, the floods that might, you know, surface uh, during the rains. And yeah, it's all about you and all that uh, we have, you know, thought to you on this program. This is the time for us to put them into practice, keeping your environment clean, disposing your waste properly, most importantly. Of course, you know, when it rains, we see floods here and there. But then, it's not just natural, it's as a result of our own Andy work. So that's why I'm here to remind you about how best we can, you know, keep our environment clean and prepare for the rains. The rains are here already. We know the effects, but hey, in order for us not to, you know, be, um, what's that word again? In order for us to, you know, be prepared, yes, for what may arise, especially when it rains heavily. So we're here to talk about how best we can, you know, keep our environment clean, especially during the rainy season, by practicing proper waste disposal methods. And let's not forget, Loma is still embarking on its zero tolerance policy. Yes, and it's all in a bid to attain positive behavioral change. Like I always say, it starts, it begins with you and I. Our behavior must change if we must achieve a cleaner and more sustainable environment. Yeah, so fostering environmental responsibility is what Loma has been all about all this while. And that's what we do on this station, uh, on this program precisely. You know, sensitizing you, educating you on proper waste disposal methods. Yes, proper waste disposal method. So, like I said, Loma is still on track with its zero tolerance policy. Let's not forget, zero tolerance to improper waste disposal. Yes, we still have the enforcement team on ground. Uh, Loma, uh, together with the CHI operatives, they're out there watching you. If you're that man or that woman who likes to, you know, throw away dirt into the drainage channels, Remember, Loma is watching you, and you will get caught and prosecuted. The mobile court is already there, waiting for you of environmental offenders. So you should have that in mind. Yeah, so uh, just to um, bring to your notice that the um, Olushosu uh, dump site has just, uh, a rehabilitation of the Olushosu dump site has been uh, rehabilitated. Rehabilitation has just been completed. Yeah, so the managing director, CEO Loma, and the person of Miwa Agbadi uh, is urging you and I, yes, to, you know, put into practice proper waste disposal methods. It's very important. That's the song Loma has been singing all the while. Now, the essence of rehabilitating the Olushosu Dom site is just to ensure smooth waste disposal operations across the state. 
Banegeshi uh, uh, said the maintenance effort was aimed at improving operational efficiency in anticipation of the rainy season. And according to him, of course we know that Loma is focused on enhancing operational efficiency in a bid to improve turnaround times for waste disposal trucks. He also added that the rehabilitation will significantly reduce queues, translating to faster and more effective waste collection services. So, so that's uh, in one hand, but we also have a role to play, yes, by reducing the amount of waste that gets to these dump sites. Remember the um, three mantras, um, reuse, reduce, and recycle. We'll get to delve into that again, but Lagos, let's go on a quick break. I uh, will take a message from our partners, Loma, and when we come back, we'll begin the conversation. Stay here. Stop it! Yes, you don't do it! Indiscriminate dumping of refuse into drainage channels is prohibited in Lagos State. It has to stop. Henceforth, it's zero tolerance for building or erecting structures on drainages, setbacks, and alignments in Lagos State. Government is doing its best to make our environment clean and safe. As responsible citizens, we too should play our part to sustain it. Dumping of refuse into drainages, canals or gutters destroys our roads and drainage systems, causes flooding in some areas and poses great dangers to lives and damage to our public structures. Desist from disposing refuse into drainage channels and canals. It's damaging to the image of Lagos State. Remember, there are laws and regulations guiding the disposal of waste in Lagos State. Offenders will be prosecuted according to the law. Do the right thing. Use refuse bins, not canals, gutters or drains. Dispose waste responsibly. Protect our drainage system. Contribute to a safer environment for us all. Ibega Ikuleiko, Ajumoshinyu, Office of Drainage Services, announcer. If you ask me what a team of heroes look like, I'd say people committed to creating a clean and beautiful state. After all, what's there to love about living in a dirty and harmful environment? That's why at Loma, we built an exceptional team with people like the fearless binger who picks up waste from your house and streets. The sweet Musa who navigates all waste to the landfills. Yadupe, the super cleaner who saves our roads from litters. And of course, our magical recycler, Atiluke, who converts waste to wealth. Everyone at Loma is committed to keeping Lagos clean in every way for a safer and healthier Lagos. Loma, a league of heroes. Keep Lagos clean. Lagos, welcome back to the show. It's Clean and Edge here on Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM. So today we're exploring the importance of, you know, uh, being environmentally conscious and uh, practical ways at which we can uh, dispose our waste, keep our environments clean, especially uh, during the rainy season. Quick traffic updates. I have this one here talking about the Bariga Uru Corridor and talks about movement from Yanwaru towards the large Yulag waterfront all the way to Adekunle. Uh, looking quite uh, calm and a return journey from Adekunle through Yanwaru also looking very calm. Now traffic movement from Yanwaru towards Bagada all the way to Charlie Boy seems to be very much in good shape and from Charlie Boy the return journey uh, to Bagada is equally good. Now a quick one on the Bariga axis from Ifako. Uh, Bagada down to New Garage the stretch of Bali looking very good and uh, movement towards Maritala uh, into Baringa roundabout, pretty slow, owing to uh, fuel queues emanating from NMPC uh, petrol station there. Uh, now, movement towards Elagia Chemist, all, to, all the way to Elag Waterfront seems to be quite fair. All right, so generally it's calm within the area of coverage. I uh, will take one more from the Apapa Corridor. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you now that uh, 
Traffic movement from Mile 2 k through Otto Wharf, UBA, the stretch of MTN Sunrise down to Trinity, Coconut looks good. But by Tinkan Island Flats Gate, I understand uh, we have recorded high volume of escalator trucks and tankers trying to negotiate their way into Flats Gate through the bar although the barrier is not obstructing the free flow of traffic, but uh, they're properly streamlined, so you need to look out for that corridor. Uh, good movement, uh, connecting second gate, and from Tinkan Island, second gate, the journey through Liverpool, uh, Liverpool connecting, uh, okay, uh, underneath the bridge, quite busy uh, towards NNPC, uh, this, uh, this fence and fill, but we have officers on ground making sure uh, things are done appropriately there. And from Glaxo, movement was Niger, down to Wolfgate, busy, high volume of escalator trucks negotiating their way into Wolf proper. So for the return journey from Wolfgate through Glaxo, Liverpool, uh, underneath the bridge, waterside down to Tinkan Island, second gate and first gate. We have recorded good movement on that stretch and movement from Tinkan Island, first gate to Coconut. Uh, the stretch of Trinity all the way to Otto Wharf is equally good. So that's some traffic reports for you uh, this uh, morning. All right, so clean in there just to show. So, uh, like I said, the landfill, well, the landfill has just uh, completed a rehabilitation process. All right, and um, it behoves on us too to play our part as the waste generators. Uh, reducing the amount of waste that gets to the uh, landfills is equally very important. Of course, constant rehabilitation is necessary as well, and that's a part of the government, but our own part still remains uh, crucial. Now, remember the three mantras, which is applicable to every household, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Of course, reducing the amount of waste we generate is important. Uh, reusing um, materials, uh, we have what we call reusable materials. Yes, yeah, so we can put uh, that into consideration, like our ceramic plates, plastic plates, you know, these are reusable materials. Instead of using them once, they're not one-offs. They're made in such a way that it could be washed, properly cleaned, and used over time before it begins to expire. So um, using such materials also helps reducing the amount of waste generated. And recycling waste is important. Yes, we have lots of people tapping into the economic benefits of waste recycling. You too can be a part of that. Of course, Loma is also, you know, uh, helping to promote waste recycling through the PACAM app, which I'm sure that one of these days will have one of the representatives come talk about it extensively. Uh -huh. So the PACAM app is spelled P-A-K-A-M on uh, Google Play and App Store. So these are the three R's which we must uh, put into consideration. Now, proper waste management during the rainy season. Of course, we understand the rainy season brings relief from the scorching heat, as which we've been experiencing over time. It replenishes water bodies and rejuvenates the earth. However, it also poses significant challenges to our environment due to increased runoff, uh, soil erosion, and pollution. Yes. Okay, so... It is our responsibility to mitigate these impacts and ensure the well-being of our environment. So we shall be looking at some tips, uh, you know, we must put into practice to take care of our environment during the rainy season. One, proper waste management. Now, effective waste management is very crucial, especially during the rainy season. This is something I, I um, talked about during the start of the program. Now, the essence of this is to prevent litter from clogging drains and waterways. Now, when you talk about liters from clogging drains and waterways, and now that is a result of our own activities. Yes, not properly disposing your waste could lead to clogged drains and waterways. And what's the resultant effect? Flooding. Remember, I mentioned flooding during the start of the program. So it is very important that we practice proper waste disposal methods. Disposing your waste properly is very crucial, especially during this rainy season. Oh, you come out and say, oh, everywhere is flooded. What's happening? Government should do something. No, this is not the government's um, concern now. It is our own concern. We live in the environment, not the government. So it is our responsibility to take care of it by disposing our waste properly. 
when your area is flooded, of course, you wouldn't like it. It could breed mosquitoes and waterborne diseases such as cholera and even some um, skin diseases as well. So you know the resultant effect of living in a flooded environment owing to the fact that, hey, it's your fault, it's my fault. But if we begin to put into practice proper waste disposal methods, this could mitigate uh, flooding in our environment. Because if you do not dispose your waste properly, what happens? It could result to clogged drains and waterways, and even environmental pollution. Of course, when it rains, we have the water, you know, washing away liters from the streets into the drainage channels. And what then happens? It clogs these channels, and the water has nowhere to flow through. So what happens? The whole street is flooded. And there are times and cases, situations where, you know, houses are flooded, submerged in water. Of course, yes, it's, it's something that's not new. So practicing proper waste disposal methods is very important. So let's talk about it. Now, first off, uh, when you, after your waste has been generated, from the source, maybe from a kitchen or you throw a party or whatever it is, there's some gathering or celebration, it's very important that you separate the decomposable waste from the non-decomposable waste. We could also call it biodegradable from the non-biodegradable. But in the layman's term, separate your organic waste from the inorganic waste. So what are these organic waste? Let me reiterate it to you. These are the waste you generate from your kitchens, from your, you know, such as your food leftovers, or if you're going to throw a party, kill that cow, you know, the waste you generate uh, that can decay over time. That's why I mentioned food leftovers and uh, whatever it is that can decay over time. Basically, separate them from the... Um, non-biodegradable waste, which are your pet bottles, your plastics, your, uh, you know, uh, containers, metallic containers, metals, they include all this um, waste that cannot uh, uh, decay easily. So have them bagged separately and most importantly ensure that you get the specified bean. Yes, there's a, a 240 liter bean. That's the specification Loma has given us. It must be a 240 liter bean with a lead, and uh, it uh, must be a roller bean with two tires. Yes, I'm trying to break it down to the layman out there. Or perhaps you have the Loma beans, the smart beans as well available for you. But make sure it's a 240 liter bean with a lead and handle for easy movement, for easy transportation. So have those beans. You should have at least two of them, depending on, you know, how large your household or how many tenants you have in that building. So ensure that you dispose that waste into that bin and have it covered. Because if you do not have it covered, you would have rodents come there to litter, to scatter the bin and eventually litter the whole environment. So it's part of it as well. So it's a collective effort. It has to do with you and I because we must tell that neighbor, that friend, that this is the right way to go. The rains are here, Lagos. We must begin to practice proper waste disposal methods. We should make it our lifestyle. Stop living a non-challenged life. You're in your vehicle, finish eating that, you know, biscuit or whatever it is, and you just wind down and you throw the, you know, the wrapper or whatever it is, or even you, you consume uh, bottled water and you just throw the, um, the container out through your window. It's a uh, wrong practice. Could get caught. We have the law enforcement team watching you, and the mobile court is on standby. Yeah, so uh, look out. Be on the lookout. But then, please uh, imbibe the culture of proper waste disposal practice. It is very important. Very, very important. Once again, I retreat that the rains are here. Remember that, uh, you know, what you do is what, or rather, what you sow is what you will reap, yes. So if you dispose the waste properly, of course, you wouldn't have your environment flooded. We also have cases of, you know, people, uh, tenements, uh, bringing out their waste uh, during the rainy season and, you know, you know just offloading them into the drainage channels. That's a very bad practice. That's quite horrible, I must say. But, hey, the Loma enforcement team are watching you. We have people watching you, and one day you will be prosecuted for that act. 
The most importantly, still talking about proper waste disposal methods, ensure to patronize your PSP operators servicing your area. You can reach out to them. You can also reach out to Lorme if you've got uh, waste disposal challenges. I'll definitely, you know, let you have the contact details and so you can reach out to Loma just in case you've got waste disposal, um, you know, challenges. Your PSP operators, they're your friends. They're there for you. Reach out to them. They'll come and evacuate that waste as at when due. It's very important because if you do not reach out to them on time, what happens? The waste will be, um, your uh, waste bin will be over, uh, overloaded. And, you know, we have the waste begin to, you know, drop and leak out the environment. So it's a, it's a, it's a, a collective effort. Uh, patronize the assigned PSP operators, not the cat pushers. Remember, it's, it is and it remains an offense for you to patronize the cat pushers because, hey, they pose as a threat to the environment. And security as well, security-wise, they also pose as a threat. So please... Ensure you patronize the PSP operators, yeah, the assigned waste uh, collectors in Lagos State. And pay your PSP bills promptly. That's the right way to go. That's what keeps them in the business. If you do not pay your PSP bills promptly, hey, they won't be able to, you know, carry out uh, their activities as at when due, as expected. So it's very important to patronize the assigned PSP operators, not to cat pushers. And as you do so, ensure to pay your uh, PSP bills as at when due. All right, so that's it on the conversation today, Lagos. It's all about you and how best you can keep your environment clean in order to avert flooding during the rainy season. Proper waste disposal methods, begin to put that into practice. Tell someone to tell someone that this is the right way to go. Now, don't forget that you can connect with Loma via the following platforms. A text message 0708-060-1020 or via social media, Facebook, Loma.gov, Instagram, Loma underscore G-O-V. Or you can uh, connect with Loma via WhatsApp on 0708-060-1020. Uh, many thanks going out to the Director of Public Affairs for uh, Loma, Mrs. Falasha Ali Kadri, and on behalf of my executive producer, Tayo Akonle. The show will come your way again next week, Saturday, at exactly 9.15. But you then have yourself a wonderful weekend and a beautiful week ahead. My name is Mike James.